KNON 89.3 FM in Dallas and Fort Worth, the voice of the people. Business owners, tell KNON's listeners about your business. You can put your business or event on KNON. KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227, or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you. Good morning, it's the Worker's Beat. This is Gene Lance and Bonnie Mathias. Good morning. The number to call is 972-647-1893. Bunch of stuff going on today. Yeah. Uh, the mayor is having a march against the domestic violence, and this is going to happen down at City Hall at 10 o'clock. So by the time we go off the air, there'll be a bunch of people down at City Hall in Dallas against uh, domestic violence. I don't know if it's if he could have picked a safer issue or not to be against, but yeah. you know I'm glad he did it's, it. I am too. I mean, I think uh, it's really been it's uh, we have to bring some attention to it. I'm pretty uh, sure there's not going to be a counter march in favor of domestic violence. Oh, I certainly hope not. So uh, I certainly hope that wouldn't be good. So if you're against uh, domestic violence, and I'm sure everybody is, uh, you can hurry on down to the city hall plaza. And hopefully, maybe it'll stop raining by then. I hope so. Tomorrow is supposed to be sunny and bright, and the postal workers want you hey. at the main post office in Dallas. Now, that's just across the river from downtown. Mm -hmm. If you're on Highway 30 and you're coming from downtown, you just exit right away to go uh, to the post office. If you're coming from the other way, if you're coming from the Fort Worth side and you're going to the main post office, you get off on the Beckley exit and then you have to turn around and go back. So it's between Beckley and Sylvan on uh, Highway 30, the main post office. Don't get that mixed up with the bulk mail center. Mm -mm. And they want you there between 1 and 5, but I'm telling everybody to go at 2. At so two. we'll all be there at one time. Okay. Uh, but if you can get there between 1 and 5, the postal workers will be delighted. And the reason for that, Bonnie, you want to tell them? The reason for that is to stop the, the postmaster general wants to stop six-day delivery. He wants to stop delivering mail on Saturdays. Yeah, we talked about this last week. <laughs> yep. uh, and uh, Brother Lewis Fulbright was on with us. And he said this would mean 20% cuts in, jobs, in, yeah. uh, in the jobs uh, yep. at the post office. So that's well, that's a that's a whopping big cut. Don't you think that maybe they could do things a little more uh, smarter? You know how you work smarter instead of harder when when you add it all up, Bonnie. There's an all-out assault against the rights of working people. Oh Laid my off, gosh, yeah. layoffs, cutbacks, taking away, taking away uh, your health care benefits. I don't know if you saw this morning's paper or not. But the retirees at American Airlines are sitting on the edge of their seats today yeah. trying to figure out whether or not the judge is going to let American Airlines take away their, their health care. The health care that they retired with, you know, they said, well, when I retire, I'm going to have this and I'm going to have that. Well, they ain't going to have it if this judge turns around and takes it away from them. Other things coming up, and this is an important one because this is one I think we can gather around you know, and, and just kind of catch our breath because there's 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 turning out to be a demonstration every other day now. I know. Everybody is. is getting cut. Everybody's getting their toes stomped on, and they're all each calling an individual demonstration. But on Tuesday night, we're going to meet with the Walmart organizing people, right. and we're going to try to get together some kind of fight back to organize Walmart. But also, I think this is something that everybody – it has an interest in. Uh, we should. Of course, we ought to be interested in all of this stuff. Right, I know. but it's hard. I mean, there's so much going on, uh -huh. and, and I'm like you. I think the the largest movement right now is exactly that our Walmart. Uh, we have the the most people affected, uh, and, and it's just this is important to get these folks uh, get folks fired up about Walmart workers. Yeah. 
I, well, you know. the the thing about the cuts all over the world, all over the all over this nation at least, when people get those cuts, they say we're getting more and more like Walmart workers. Yep, it's getting to be in the vernacular that what the Walmart model is what they want for us, right down next to slavery. Well, actually, what they want for us is slavery. But yeah. on the way towards slavery, they want us to become more and more like Walmart workers. For a big, uh, you know, and I mentioned this last week that Walmart came out uh, several months ago and said, oh, we're going to do our part. Oh, we're yeah. going to employ veterans. Yeah. For, for as long as we pay them nothing. Yeah. 881 an hour on a part-time basis. Oh, and you probably can't afford the insurance. Yeah, that'd scare me back into the army. I'm telling you. Anyway, we're going to meet to discuss uh, an overall plan of how we can help with the Walmart organizing drive at 7 o'clock Tuesday, March the 26th at the United Food and Commercial Workers Union Hall. This is uh, Local 540. That's the Meat Cutters, the most progressive, well, one of the most progressive unions that we have had over since the Vietnam War. Uh, and here's the address. It's, and you better write this down, too, because it's not their old hall out on uh, Garland Road. Yeah, they got They're, a new They got a new hall, and it's 17780. 17780 Preston Road, Dallas, Texas, 75252. I believe that's up above the loop. I believe it's like on your way to Addison or something. Okay. Uh, you, you go. You take Campbell Road, I think, to get up there. Wow. One seven seven eight zero Preston Road, Dallas, Texas seven five two five two. You know, I don't and go. That's no, a seven o'clock Tuesday night. I don't go north of thirty very often. <laughs> yeah, I get nosebleed when I come across the Trinity River. Right? I live in Oak Cliff. Yeah, I live in Pleasant Grove. So, so it's like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know nothing about up there toward mm -mm. Addison. Mm -mm. Uh, okay, on Thursday. A picket at Love Field, oh, and yes. on behalf of the Transport Workers Union, just one of the one of the many groups getting their toes stomped on, uh, and this will be on Thursday, March the 28th, from 11:30 to 3:30. And this is an easy one to find because they get all over. You know all those signs where it says Love Field on uh, Mockingbird, so you can't miss it. Yeah, you can't miss it, and there's parking across the street usually. So. Uh, so they'll be all they'll be hanging off of those signs out in front of Love Field and the Transport Workers Union. Pretty good about turning out. And they and they're asking people just if you're just driving by, just honk your horn, wave, you know, just show your support to these folks because Southwest is going after them really, really strong. I and, said, and that's sad. I said there was one every other day. Actually, I should say there's I, one almost every day. You hadn't missed a day. Because I just finished Thursday. Yep. Here's Friday. <laughs> Friday is Good Friday, and this is when the uh, Dallas uh, Christian Progressive Group uh, will have their Good Friday march. I don't know if you've ever been on that, Bonnie, mm -mm. but it's pretty good because what they do is they take uh, verses from the Bible and slogans from today and put them together. Like, for example, if I go and I expect to go, uh, I might carry one for retirees saying, Honor thy father and mother and don't cut Medicare. Oh, okay. You know, That's so cool. you have something come out of the Bible and yeah. something that comes out of contemporary struggles like that. So they're they're pretty good progressive organization, but usually there's a lot of walking involved in this. So I'm going to give all four of the stopping places because you might not be able to do the whole walk. Right. Because uh, they usually it's a, like a three mile walk. Uh, at 10 a.m. they will meet at Young and Harwood. Young and Harwood is, that's pretty much, you know, that's the area where a lot of homeless people, mm -hmm. people laying around on the streets and that sort of thing. They gather at Young and Harwood, and then uh, at 1010, they're in the Main Street Garden at Main and Commerce, Main Commerce in Harwood. That's a, that's a park. Mm -hmm. And then at 1020, they're at the Rosa Park statue on Elm and Lamar. And at 1040, they're at Below Park. Well, they have to hustle to get there uh, in 20 minutes. At Below Park, across from the federal building, Main Commerce at Griffin. And then at 1050, they're going to be at the City Hall Plaza. I would like to see that. I'd like to see them get up there in 10 minutes from Below Park to uh, City Hall Plaza. That, they're this, huffing it. They might have motor scooters or something. Maybe. But, uh, oh, I've got segues. So meet them at one or the other of these places. And, of course, the main one, I think, is 10 a.m. at Young and Harwood. And then, you you know, if you can walk with them, that's good. And if you can't, well, you know, you can meet them again at the other places. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's a good one. Now, I don't want to get away without uh, mentioning April the 10th. This is a little yes. bit further down the horizon. 
But this is our next chance to take a bus to Austin and curl up on the bus for hours and hours. Uh, it's not an easy thing to do, no, it but it's good. important. The, the, fe the public workers are the ones getting, getting killed. I mean, I know everybody's taking cutbacks, but the public workers are getting layoffs, yep. and they're and and really the legislature is after their retirement. They got nothing. Their retirement is is in the safekeeping, the the gentle hands of the guardianship of the state of Texas, which God, is liable to steal at any time. That's so terrifying. It is. I wouldn't want the state of Texas guarding my I don't little even nest egg. I think I'd you. let them guard my piggy bank. And end up in Rick Perry's campaign uh, funds. There you go. There you go. So if you want to help the state workers, and I do, and I and I think yeah. everybody should. This is going to be a priority for uh, Jobs with Justice. Uh, on April the 10th, you go to Austin with the Texas State employees. Now, I'm just going to give you a phone number because the buses leave from different places at different times. And so you need to get on the phone and find out uh, where yours is. And it's not a free ride either. It's, it's real, real cheap, but it's not free. Uh, 214 942 Four three zero five. I'll give it again. The guy's name is Joe Montemayor. So call Joe at 214-942-4305. That's excellent. And go with the state workers. Yes. CWA, TSEU. Yay! And me and Bonnie got our hoodies on, and that's right. The rest of the rest of the station is pretty terrified because me and you know we got our hoodies on, and you got your our Walmart hat on too. Yeah. Man, you are really. I'm terrifying. You are. I? You are. You're just a scary dude. That's what I. That was. That was what I was going for. It was kind of a scary look. You did good. Uh, Bonnie, tell us about why we wear these hoodies and why people. Why well, people should keep remembering us. You know, Gene Zimmerman or Mr. Zimmerman down there in Florida uh, murdered Trayvon Martin. Uh, and for wearing because a hoodie. he had a hoodie on and he yeah. looked suspicious. Yeah. He was wearing a hoodie. Black kid hoodie. So lots of people Looks wearing suspicious. hoodies now in, in honor of Trayvon Martin, yep. and uh, and uh, we ain't gonna let this go. No, no, right. and because this guy can't get away with murder. I mean, he was very clear on on the nine one one call that that he was stalking the guy. So you know he's a kid with a hoodie on, mm -hmm. uh, and so we wear our hoodies uh, in support of Trayvon Martin. Plus our hoodies say K N O N. Yes, across, the voice across the of the of people. It. If you if you're looking at this on the video, you know, uh, Doc actually videos yeah. all this and puts it on YouTube. So if you if you uh, if you if you put two hats publishing into the YouTube search, or if you just put Gene Lance in there, I don't know if it comes come out up? with Bonnie oh, Mathias. Oh, I don't know. But if you put Gene Lance in there, it comes. You come up with all these videos that Doc takes of this program, I and you can actually see me and Bonnie I in our it. terrifying hoodies. hoodies. So what's distracting from us is a beautiful young woman that just walked in and came in and sat down here, who is not terrifying. No, she's not. She doesn't have her hoodie. She doesn't on. have a hoodie on. Christy Lara, good morning. Thank you so much for coming in. Good morning, guys. It's good to be here. Now, as everybody knows, we have been fussing on this program about why it is that so many people are not defending themselves. Why is it that 45,000 American Airlines retirees are worried sick about losing their retirement this morning, and yet you won't see them on the picket line, or you're not likely to see them turning out from meetings or anything else? Why is it that people aren't turning out? And one of the answers we came up with is that we don't, we're not doing our job right. We don't know how to ask them. We don't know how to reach people. Well, Christy Lara does, so that's why I asked her to come. How would you first go about, in a campaign, Christy, how would you first go about uh, uh, trying to get people the information that they need and, and trying to get them to turn out for things? Where do you start? Well, first I want to thank you, Gene, for uh, presuming that I know all. Uh, I know some things. I know a few tricks of the trade. Um, but I definitely don't know everything, but I thank you for inviting me. Um, I think this is an important topic. And, um, you know, uh, sometimes we take these things for granted, even within activist circles that, well, didn't you just know? Don't you know what's going on? And, um, you know, it's interesting that um, I hear the perspective you have coming from you know, being a, a long-standing union activist organizer, and you're finding difficulty um, organizing and communicating with people. 
And, you know, we're in the communication age. So, right. uh, right. you know, I think a lot of us tend to take it for granted. Yeah, we say, Bonnie and I say it on the radio, and then we go around and we say, well, everybody should have known right. it. We said See? it on the radio. Because we know everybody must be listening to Ken Oyen. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> well, anyway, where do you start? So the first uh, thing that um, primarily uh, activists uh, in the Dallas area, um, at least the activists in the circles that I work within, um, rely on um, is our Facebook posts and Twitter posts. Facebook posts and Twitter posts. At Facebook is um, a social network website. I'm sure you, you know, it's pretty in, in, uh, per permissive and pervasive at this point. You just go to Facebook.com and and sign up. You type in yes your browser Facebook.com. And it will ask you to create an account, and the account is much like an email account. Mm -hmm. It's free, too. It's free. It's free. And um, I call it email for the lazy. <laughs> oh, I like that, because you can, like, read what you want to read. You only read like what you want to read. It's The information is um, almost like a television commercial, because mm -hmm. it's like, do you want to open this post? If you don't want to open it, it streams past you. Yep. If mm -hmm. you do want to open it, you push pause, uh, presumably, and you open the message. Yep. So uh, Facebook has a, a ton of organizing applications that we use. So um, it's not just so people can post pictures of their cats. Negative. <laughs> Although, Although there's a lot of that. that on there. People do do that. <laughs> Yeah, grumpy cat. Uh, but and, but we're talking about Facebook as an organizing tool. Yes, sir. Okay. So as pervasive is uh, people posting pictures of their grandkids. I must say. <laughs> that is exactly my problem. I don't have any grandkids. That's why. Oh, that's, that's what's why, wrong. The the secret to to internet communications is to ask your grandchildren. Yeah. But since yeah. I don't have any grandchildren, uh, then I had to ask Christy Lara, and she's here with the message. I, I actually got interested in Facebook because I went to a workshop where they, they said uh, we're going to teach about Facebook, and I said, "Well, I don't really care." But then on the on the uh, on the front of the of the little handout that they had was a little quote from an Egyptian uh, demonstrator who said, "We organized the revolution on Facebook." Wow! Yes, sir. Powerful. There. It, it is a world organizing tool, and um, two years ago, when the Occupy movement first began, na uh, nations were organizing and streamlining protests and demonstrations um, synced with one another across the world <laughs> through uh, venues such as Facebook and Twitter. Um, and of course, we used websites but um, even more so, we use the, the social networking websites to organize that. So you, uh, you said you'd start with just a posting on Facebook. So you just tell people that this is going to happen. Now, now, I know you're working on the April 10th bus march. So was that the first thing you did was just put something on your Facebook that said, uh, let's, go to, let's go to Austin on April 10th? The first thing I did was visit the TSEU website. Um, which is a um, Texas State Employees Union. Texas State Employees Union. It's a grounded website, meaning that it doesn't do. It, it sits there, um, and so it doesn't do stuff. It doesn't do stuff. It doesn't have and links so, and all that. no offense to websites, no. but they 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 need to do stuff. They don't walk <laughs> and they don't talk, and they're certainly not going to put a commercial out there for you. Right. Uh -huh. So the first thing I do is I go to the TSEU website, and then I go to my Facebook page, and I link the two, and I say, um, uh, you know, it says my name's Christy Lara, and I want all of my friends to know. Which at this point, if you're my friend, there you're in a list of 596 people. Mm -hmm. I want all of the people that I'm friends with to know that the TSEU is holding an event April 10th. Mm -hmm. If you are one of my friends, you receive my post. If you receive and, my, and they can share it. They can share it as and that's well. That's why that's why the Egyptian yeah. Revolution took off like this because people would share these posts. Somebody yeah. would say there's a demonstration in such and such a place, and the, and other people would share it. Next thing you know, they got their 500 friends, and then their 500, and then their 500. Yeah, that's it. Is it time for us to take a break? It is. I think I hear music. It is. All right, we'll take a short break, and we'll be back with Christy Lara teaching you how to organize in the modern world. Seem kind of strange. My buddy Joe was missing. 
Want to find out about upcoming events at KNON? Want to see pictures from past events or need information about the station? Then you need to like the official KNON Facebook page. It's easy to find. Just go to facebook.com slash KNON893. It's the KNON 89.3 FM station produced page for Facebook. It's the easiest way to keep up with what's going on here at KNON. Like us and share with your friends today. That's facebook.com slash KNON893. Except no substitutions. Would you help a word to burn? This is Sunny Boy Mark, and I'd like to take a minute here to tell you about over 60 minutes of great blues listening available now on KNON's Texas Blues Radio Volume 5 Blues CD. This is some great stuff, folks. 15 tracks from the Two Tones, Blues Boy Bo, Betty Whittington, Andrea Dawson, Kirkland James, Sonny Collie, Johnny Red and the Roosters, the Chris Watson Band, the Rough Cut Blues Band, Jeff Stone with Charlie Love, David Millsap, Sir Loin and the Ash Kicking Machine, Michael J. and the Paul Bird Band and J.J. and the Detonators. The thousand copies we made are selling fast and we won't reissue it. Get yours now at Forever Young Records in Grand Prairie, Record Town in Fort Worth, and in Dallas at Bill's Records and Rewind Music. The CD is available as a download at cdbaby.com. All proceeds benefit KNON, sponsored by Forever Young Records. Vinyl copies available at Forever Young Records only. For more info on Texas Blues Radio, Radio Volume 5, visit KNON.org. Your ears been bending for some blues? Well, feed them the real thing with Texas Blues Radio Volume 5. This is the extremely scary and and menacing that's right workers beat program with bonnie Matthias and gene lance I love it. dressed in our black k-n-o-n hoodies tell don't, me is that star don't be wars afraid. is it yeah. star wars okay i want to you know i don't want to mix up the two I that's know the part where the, the the black knight comes out you know when, oh darth vader that's the darth, right. that's the darth vader okay intro okay cool it says, now my husband would know that right off the bat <laughs> not, <laughs> not me does all that breathing. Anyway, we were talking about <laughs> how to like organize in the modern world, and so we had to find a young person, and so we brought Christy <laughs> right? Lara. We brought in Christy Lara, who, who really has, has real organizing chops with uh, uh, Occupy and with just about everybody else that uh, does anything today. She said the first thing you do is post something on uh, on Facebook. But is that that you can use Facebook in more ways than that, right? Yes. Um, the first thing you would do is post uh, something on Facebook, and it's much like sending an email out to your friends. Only mm-hmm. it goes to every single friend all at once. But the friends only have to open it if they want to. If they I don't see. want to open it, it just stays in their stream and floats around into the uh-huh. abyss. Right. Um, but the best thing about Facebook is its organizing tools. There are several activist organizing tools, and we use them, boy. (laughs) Create an event. Um, That is so cool. The best part is the creating the event section. Mm -hmm. And um, most notably is uh, its calendar feature. Because if I post, TSEU has an event uh, April 10th, and you know I'm going on with my life and you know doing my thing Um, what Facebook will do is add that to my calendar and remind me that I have an event coming that I said I wanted to go to that's right and then it'll have my friends remind me and my friends will uh, send me hey I saw you signed up for this event are you gonna go yeah so it's like really helpful in keeping us keeping that activity on the on the top burner um, of Mm -hmm. what we have going on in our lives so so after you when you set up the event on Facebook then you invite your friends or whichever ones you think would be interested yes you invite them to participate in the same event right yes and what do they get what they get is an invite from you, much like um, you know a postcard. And the postcard will be a save the date a postcard. And when I say postcard, I mean um, you know an e postcard, meaning an electronic postcard. It actually comes over their email. Yes, it mm-hmm. comes over their um, email, their Facebook email, and it says, "Would you like to save this event? Christy Lara is going, or Jean Lance is going, mm-hmm. um, or Bonnie is going." And you say, mm-hmm. "Wow, I really like those two, Bonnie and Jean. I think I'm going to go to that with them." They're menacing. You should go there with them. <laughs> Don't and, be scared. <laughs> Don't be scared. We won't hurt you. Okay. And then, um, you know, God willing, uh, 
thousands of people say they're going and many of them are your friends and so you say man i'm really going to go to that thing on april 10th everybody is reminding each other that it's happening and um you, the the probability of you going is much more um much more you're much more able to ensure that mm -hmm. and you can also put in there you know like when it is and who to call or stuff like that how, how much it costs if it costs anything yes and what it's about uh, the event yeah. the save the date postcard is just like a wedding invitation it yeah. has the date the time the place information regarding the event the activist event in this case mm -hmm. many people send out wedding invitations via facebook now is that really? right? Um, I've received a few of my friends sent out a, a wow. wedding invites via email, and it has all of the information that you'd want. And more so because now you have photos and you can help plan. Because once the event is created and the event page exists, um, and you are now an attending guest, you, be, you get on this list of people on the event, and you guys create the event together instead of it just being this um, abstract going to happen event. I can say, hey Jean and Bonnie I really want you to wear those black hoodies on April 10th because they're really cool and then you know 30 other people might pipe in and say hey I'm gonna wear my black hoodie too and then and uh, could Doc post a video of us in our black hoodies Doc could post a video you could be on that you know, event you could post pictures you there can you post go. your grandchildren's baby announcements mm -hmm. that say you know I'm sorry I couldn't make it to the event but my my grandbaby was born on this day or you know I see you know whatever might be going yeah. on it keeps us all very connected all right so the event then uh, is has a tendency to grow because people can share the event mm -hmm. okay and uh, what about this group that you set up because I know you set up a group for April 10th too so that's one oh. of the, the, the uh, this is another there's another whole aspect of this, organizing on Facebook Yes, yeah, so if you're doing more than just participating in events, saying, I will show up, but you say, um, I will help organize the event. Mm -hmm. And organizing um, the event online um, requires a little bit more in-depth discussion than just being on the event page. I see. So what you then can do is create um, what we call discussion groups. And in the d discussion group, you'll invite uh, people that say, yes, I'm interested in helping you plan. Uh -huh. And the discussion group creates a live space, meaning that it's a live, much like a garden. It, it you know, we're going to plant these seeds. As, we're going to say, okay, April 10th is the date. We know the day. We know the time. We know the place. We know the parties involved. Uh -huh. um, but now we need to get the details. And we need to figure out where are we going to get the black hoodies, and where are we going to uh, meet at to, uh, you know, make sure that everybody has everything they need. Who's going to make a leaflet? Yes, yeah. and the discussion group becomes that platform to. Uh, so instead of having like a meeting this week and a meeting next week to plan something, you, you're sort of having a meeting all the time. All the time, every day. When if you're up at midnight and you know, as many of us do, wake up in the middle of the night and you have that great idea and you think. Man, I'm, if I don't send this out now, I'm going to forget. Or, you know, you put that on the discussion board, and when your uh, people that are signed up on your discussion group wake up in the morning, they'll uh -huh. say, "Well, that was a great idea, Christy, at midnight." Or you might get the opposite and say, "That was a terrible idea. We should do. What we were you not thinking? Do, yeah, it was like, "Oh, it was midnight." You know, I didn't know what was going on. Who's on <laughs> how many on your discussion group for April 10th? Right um, now? I believe the discussion group right now has 12 people. Okay, so this is not a big group. Mm -hmm. This is not a big group because this is no. just primary planning. Now, yesterday on the phone, you taught me something that I didn't know, which was that as a discussion group member, I can add someone else. Yes. So I added Kim Grant, the uh -huh. vice president of the Texas Dallas AFLCO, because she's such a good organizer. And she always brings something to everything that she does, and she signed up to go to April 10th. Right. And I sent her a check-in last night. Uh, so, so I just added Kim Grant, and then when she wakes up today and looks at her email, it'll she'll get something that says you've been added to this group, mm -hmm. right? You've been added to this group, and these are the um, conversations that have occurred. And oh, I see. the mm -hmm. most important thing is that Kim doesn't have to know the other eleven people; she only has to know you. Uh huh. And um, so she knows Jean Lance. Jean Lance added her to this group, and now she's in touch with these eleven other people who are passionate about organizing. Mm -hmm. So that's where the connection is different than email because you no longer have to know each other. You just have to know the idea. 
So you, what you're working on together. What you're working on together. Okay. That's the difference. All right. Is there other aspects of Facebook before we move on to something else? There are wonderful aspects of Facebook. Okay, um, go ahead then. Another uh, fantastic um, development is your Facebook uh, syncs to your phone. So if you have a smartphone... Mm -hmm. <laughs> My smartphone has a calendar and it has voicemail and email and um, you know things that I would normally use. But the best thing about Facebook now is that it links all of my calendar events that um, Jean or whoever may be having to my phone. So my phone suddenly will remind me, Christy, do you remember that you know on Sunday you have a, you know an event happening at the postal service with the postal service workers and you know we know you didn't confirm this but you might want to go to it. So the important thing about that is that members of this discussion group don't have to be sitting at home at their computer. They can, they might be on the train going to going to Timbuktu or something. Exactly. And they can still and they're still members of this discussion group just as just as uh, volatile as anybody else. Exactly, and that's you have to show me how to do that because I don't have that on my phone. That's why I call it lazy email because uh -huh. I don't have to actively participate um, as far as opening adding myself once i've been added um or i i've added myself i am now going to get those notifications is that only for for iphones no you it's have for, an iphone don't you i do have an iphone but it's mm -hmm. for every smartphone um there are several smartphones on the uh, market i think you have, have, have we have, have smart we, we have droids you have droids uh -huh. okay yeah. so g galaxy s3s That's galaxy us. one notes um any smartphone that you may have even so so like if you're on your way to the demonstration yeah. and somebody thinks of something else bring the milk Oh. <laughs> you know, or bring, bring the banner. The water, right? Bring the banner. I'm always forgetting the banner. Yeah, banner. Uh, so somebody reminds me to bring the banner. You know, uh, just as I'm on my way out the door or something, I can get that on my phone. Your phone will so automatically. So I'm still organizing the all the way to the event and all the way through the event too. Mm -hmm. All the way to the very. Because moment. a lot of people might not go and they might want to find out. Well, what's it look like or how many people are there or something. Is like it that. raining? <laughs> and I can tell people. I can tell people via Facebook uh, while while the event is going on. Yes, um, you know th that is the most pervasive instrument of Facebook is the notifications, and so it's not that my my email won't give me that information, but my Facebook will notify me. Uh -huh. it, it's almost like sending you a voicemail or leaving you a message saying, "Christy." There's a message here for you, Christy. Make sure you get this message, and and I know I know it's an important message because it's something I signed up for. Right. Uh -huh. I may not know what the message is, but I know that it's something very important because okay. I've already agreed to. Uh, on it. our on our local uh, Facebook page, Mary will set it up where it actually sends uh, the message on a on a timed basis. So, and the closer we you get to the event it starts popping up more and more. Yes. That's um, so cool. I just learned that. I was like, wow, how cool is that? I mean, you know, I by far know, do not know all the tricks, but there are many, many, many tools available to us in this day and age. And I encourage every single person, if you feel even the tiniest bit of, um, you know, if you, if you feel just a little bit you uh, of anxiety about uh, going to Facebook, the first thing I would encourage you to do is go to www.facebook.com. A blue and white screen will pop up. And all you're going to do is say, I want to create a new account. And if that's the very first thing you do today, mm -hmm. then that will be your first inclination. And, and the other thing you need to know is once you create an account, um, you'll see a search bar, much like a Google search bar, um, but it's a Facebook search bar. And I encourage anybody listening who may not have a Facebook account that when you sign, one, sign up for one, do a search for Gene Lance, and you will Im immediately be uh, see all of our activities and, um, and actions that we have in the future. Okay. What else, what else can we do? This is amazing. The other thing you can do is um, when you type in Gene Lens, K-N-O-N will pop up at, on their Facebook mm -hmm. page. And um, I've added K-N-O-N to my Facebook page. So whenever K-N-O-N sends out uh, 
um, information about uh, things that are going on here at the station, I get a notification mm -hmm. in my Facebook, a feed that shows me what's going on here at the station. Thank you, Clint. So you can not only... You can not only add people, but you can add organizations. Right. I see. Yeah. And and all of this all of this access that you have then can be brought to be focused on organizing. Yes. See, when I first got on Facebook, all I saw was my friends' <laughs> pictures of their cats. <laughs> And so I said, well, I don't really need this, you know. So I, I stayed on Facebook for a year or two, you know, without really using it. And then I saw that quote that said that the Egyptian Revolution was organized on Facebook. And then, uh, then I started trying to get into how to organize. But this, this kind of blows me away. What's your name? This is an admission. Uh, because for years now, I've complained that people don't come to union events. And uh, I know of a whole bunch of union events. One of them is tomorrow, yep. for example. Uh, at the letter carriers. At the letter carriers, at the, at the post office, mm -hmm. from 1 to 5 tomorrow at the main post office in Dallas. So I got on Facebook, and I said, well, I know this is going to be an event on Facebook. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> Nobody created. Nobody had put this. So the thing is that I realized is that... We are complaining that people aren't coming, and we don't. Because we are not asking them. Nobody knows yes. about it. We haven't. <clears throat> we haven't done everything we could do to organize them well, because, uh, frankly, we don't know how. But it's so easy. It's so easy, and and you know, I'm I'm kind of surprised. I figured the letter carriers would have had something up there, but uh, you know, and that not. happens sometimes, even in with the most um, active and organized. Um, groups. Mm -hmm. Sometimes someone thinks someone else is going to do it. Right. And sometimes that someone else is you. Let us interrupt <laughs> this program with a flash announcement. We have State Representative Lon Burnham on the phone. All right. Good awesome. morning, <laughs> State Representative Lon Burnham. Good morning, Gene. How are you guys doing today? It's, not only you, not only you, state representative, but you're like a leading state representative, and people know you all over the state. And before that, you were known all over the state as a top <laughs> activist. So tell us what's going on, sir. Well, this past week uh, was an important week in the Texas legislative process in that we began considering our various sunset bills. Mm -hmm. And one of the bills that people don't pay enough attention to when it's going through is the reauthorization of any agency that affects consumers. And we voted on the sunset bill for the Public Utility Commission this week so literally, we spent all day Wednesday fighting tooth and nail on some very subtle issues that we think are important to um, um, making things better for the consumers. You know, historically, if you look at how this has evolved back in the early 70s when utility rates started just going crazy sky high, um, uh, consumers started advocating to have a public utility commission uh, to handle some of this regulation. Well, mm -hmm. the industry opposed it until they could figure out how to get a handle on it, and then they decided they wanted it because it made it a lot easier for them to control the outcome. Yes. And, of course, one of the biggest problems we have is with adequate utility regulation in this state is we've had the same governor for over a decade now controlling all the appointments. There are three Public Utility Commission members that are appointed by the governor, and they are the decision-making body that makes all the decisions relative to uh, utility regulation in the state, mm -hmm. except for what is actually stated, laid out there in law. So when we get a chance, a uh, bite of the apple, if you will, like this time around, on sunset, it's really important that people be focused and unfortunately the whole process is controlled mm -hmm. by people that are controlled by corporate interest uh -huh. so you know you have your sunset review process you got your commission you got your staff and you got your appointees will the appointees to the sunset commission are appointed by uh the right wing republican uh uh lieutenant governor and uh and speaker strauss so you know the, the way they make the rules for making the rules, you're behind in the first place. But we did make some progress this time uh, with the record votes on consumer issues on uh, Wednesday. And part of it was because 
some of the new kind of libertarian anti-establishment Republicans were listening to the Democrats, and there are now 55 of us, so we're, we're not quite outnumbered two to one. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, uh, it sure would be a lot better if we were in a majority, or I'd even settle for another 10 or 12 of us, which is part of what I'm working on uh, outside the context of uh, the day-to-day legislative process. I'm looking at how we can bring more pro-consumer uh, people to the legislature. Are you telling us, uh, Lon Burnham, that this legislature is not as bad as the last one? It's not as bad as the last one. Part of it, hallelujah, will, will be. Is, I mean, how could you be any worse than the last one? Yeah, that's what uh, I'm asking. Listen, they're, uh, they're they're cutting us off, Lon. Uh, can you stay on till after the break? It just uh, take a couple of minutes. Sure, sure. All right, we're going to take a short break. For some unspoken belief Heard the story John Henry Brown Kiki Friedman's Man in Black Tequila presents the 4th Annual KNON Fort Worth Blues Fest this Sunday, March 24th at the Live Oak Music Hall in Fort Worth. This year's lineup stars Holland K. Smith with special guests Buddy Whittington, Larry Lampkin, Trainwreck featuring Reverend K.M. Williams, Washboard Jackson, and Jeff Stone, the Michael Lee Band, Robert Johnson Soul from Austin, Jackie Donlow, and Kirkland James. Doors open at 3 and the music starts right away. The event will be hosted by Blue Lisa. There will be food available courtesy of the Live Oak Music Hall. We'll be raffling on a custom KNON guitar from Kona Guitars. Tickets are on sale now at KNON.org for every Young Records in Grand Prairie and Record Town in Fort Worth. The beautiful Live Oak Music Hall is located at 1311 Lipscomb Avenue in Fort Worth and is a non-smoking venue. That's the fourth annual KNON Fort Worth Blues Fest starring Holland K. Smith with special guest Buddy Whittington, Larry Lampkin, Trainwreck featuring Reverend K.M. Williams, Washboard Jackson and Jeff Stone, the Michael Lee Band, Robert Johnson, Soul from Austin, Jackie John Lowe, and Kirkland James this Sunday, March 24th at the Live Oak Music the call in Fort Worth, sponsored by Kinky Friedman's Man in Black Tequila. Available now. It's going wrong. Recycle Revolution is a local recycling collection service and community drop-off center. They collect and accept all traditional recyclables, including paper, plastic, aluminum, cardboard, and glass, as well as materials like TVs, computers, lamps, light bulbs, batteries, ballasts, and styrofoam. They offer collection services to apartments, condos, and businesses. They also offer a community drop-off located at 1703 Chestnut Street in Dallas. For more information, 214-566-3025 or RecycleRevolutionDallas.com. We're back on the workers' beat. Number is 972-647-1893. But if you call, I want you to wait until uh, we get a chance to talk with State Representative Lon Burnham, someone that anybody that's uh, active in North Texas has the highest esteem for you, Representative Burnham. And we were saying, you were telling us that this, this legislature is not as bad as the last one. That's exactly the case. Now, there's a couple of reasons why it's not as bad as the last one. One, of course, is just there's more Democrats than there were last time. But the second one is the budget situation itself is not as bad. But I want to get this point across uh, to your listening audience. Um, uh, we did a horrible thing to public education last mm. time. We cut we cut funding by $5 billion. For the first time since World War II, we were not putting as much in per student as we had in years past. So that's a horrible, devastating cut in Dallas alone. It's caused the uh, proposed closing schools. Most schools all over the state have had any number of financial problems. Now this time, because the economy is better, we are generating and getting more uh, funds coming into the state. So. The governor starts the session off saying, well, we're just going to cut taxes. That's ridiculous. We have one of the lowest, we have an unfair tax system, but we're not generating enough money to do what we need to do in the first place. We could have last time and we should this time restore the adequate funding 
a public education. Well, I'm that's what sure we I'm marched sure. for. That's what we marched for. We we went down there. There have been two big demonstrations down in Austin mm-hmm. trying to get the the funds restored to the public education system. But uh, I understand they're not going to do it. That's right. And what you're what uh, people are misunderstanding just because they're going to put some of it back in doesn't mean they're going to put all of it back in. Mm-hmm. And as recently as late yesterday afternoon, <clears throat> I was in a conversation with State Representative Yvonne Davis from Dallas, who is the Democratic Caucus Chair, and we were talking about what we can do. To, I mean, we are literally fighting hand-to-hand combat to get additional dollars, however many additional dollars we can get. But we need people, particularly in Dallas, to be involved and talking, if you're in the northern half of Dallas County, it mm. is likely that your state representative is not voting for the interest of consumers mm. on, on these utility issues, and it's likely that they're not voting for um, uh, public education. And so we need people in your listening audience to call their state representative mm-hmm. and demand that they fully restore public education funding this time. Yeah. Is is there some easy way to do that, or do they just have to look them up? Well, you can call any state representative's office, and they have a computer system. You give them your uh, address, and they can tell you who your state representative is. Um, uh, and and uh, you can make you, that's an easy way to get to it. If you would like to call my office uh, on Monday morning, my office in Fort Worth is eight one seven. Nine two four nineteen ninety seven. Okay, eight one seven nine two four nineteen ninety seven. And my staff would be glad to talk to you about uh, uh, help you figure out who your state representative is. Uh huh. You, you, they can kind of tell from your zip code. Well, they but the zip, that that gets you close, but that doesn't get you exact. What they uh-huh. need is your exact address. I see. So they can tell you exactly because they can mm-hmm. look it up on the computer, mm-hmm. and and they can tell you exactly who your state representative is. I want to talk, Gene, a little bit about uh, what's coming up here. Uh, uh, literally, this past week is the first week that we started voting on anything substantive, and we spent most of the day Wednesday working on uh, uh, the PUC sunset. Uh, this week, we're going to be. Um, working on uh, House Bill 5, which is one of the education bills, and we will uh, need to uh, have people support on this again. So uh, I'm not prepared to go into the details about House Bill 5, but I want everybody to know that uh, we will begin voting this week on some of the important issues regarding reform and education. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, uh, the, the pace of the legislative session will get much quicker. As soon as we get through Easter, we will start having full days every day voting on bills that have been winding their way through the committee process and have been referred to the calendars committee for consideration on the House floor. So if you're so going to call your representative at all, you better call them this week, right? It's time to get started. If you've been mm-hmm. thinking that you, you care about public education, if you've been thinking that you care about uh, Obamacare, health care, uh, it's time to get involved and make some phone calls because uh, your members of the legislature are going to start voting with or without your input. Mm-hmm. Representative Burnham, aren't you a member of the Texas State Employees Union? Uh, yes. In fact, um, I, I've been a proud card-carrying union member since the first day I was in the legislature. And I say on more than one occasion, it's the first time I had decent health care benefits and retirement benefits. <laughs> and I don't know that I can give my union credit for that, but people got to know that unions stand up for us on uh, pension benefits, on health care benefits. Yeah. Unions stand up for us on consumer issues. Uh, our most important ally in the struggle of, of the work that we're doing in the legislature is the AFL-CIO. Well, sir, th- there's a the demonstration and a, a rally and, and lobby day on April the 10th. 
And uh, we've been kind of espousing that around here. And I wonder if you could comment on whether that's important for people to go I, to Austin or I for always that or not. Think it's an, I always think it's important for people to go to Austin because there's nothing like they're having to see you in their office space for yep. uh, members and their staff to know that you care. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, that's not the only thing you should be doing, but it's certainly one thing. And as many people as organizing buses to go down, it's really pretty easy to make a day trip to go to Austin and to participate on this citizen lobbying efforts. See it up for up up close and up front. Yep. That's in, right. In all its splendor. Hmm. Or not. Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it looks like. But uh, yeah. people can so you you're saying that the April 10th uh, opportunity to go to Austin, which is very very cheap. It's a lot cheaper than driving your car down there. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, so this would be a good thing for people to do. It's also more fun and easier because you've got somebody else doing the driving and you can relax. That's right. Now, i got another big question for you. This is kind of a loaded question, Representative uh, Burnham. Are you on Facebook? Uh, yes. All right. The, truth, the, tr- <laughs> the truth is I don't do it. Staff does it. And uh-huh. I don't even know how to tell people how to get there. But uh, staff is, have just, staff trying to drag me into the 21st century. So they've mm-hmm. got me on Facebook. And I think occasionally they even tweet for me. So you just look, people can can uh, can like you or or uh, be friends with you. Just look up Lon Burnham. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And and there's a house website that you can go to to get more information as well. Uh, I'm going to backtrack, Gene, for just a minute. I've been in Dallas three times in February this this year, talking to people about how many of the members of the Dallas County delegation, particularly the ones in the northern half of the county, do not vote for their interests. Yeah. Do not support their interest on public education. Do not support their interest on health care. Do not support their interest on consumer issues. It is imperative that we get more people in your Dallas listening audience to be engaged in state government. Could you then... Could you venture an opinion on why it is that people won't even defend themselves? Uh, you know, that's a big philosophical question of are people just too tired or were people just never really engaged in the first place? But in Texas, we have one of the worst voter participation rates of any place in the country. In one of the recent general elections, uh, Texas was dead last. Uh in voter participation and i don't care whether you're talking about your local municipal elections your city council elections it matters and unfortunately these elections all too often are about who bothers to vote Uh so it's if you don't feel like you know enough to know how to vote go find somebody that's actually involved in your school district politics and your municipal politics and, and here's an example that really concerns me, how few people bother to vote in either one primary or the other. You should vote in the Republican primary or the Democratic primary. In Dallas County, uh, almost all of your judges now, because the Democrats have won, are Democratic judges. Judges are important. In mm-hmm. Tarrant County, all the judges are Republican because uh, Tarrant County is still dominated by Republicans. Mm-hmm. But re- but you need to participate in one primary or another, uh, whether it's in the normal election time in March or delayed like it was this last year. Okay. Can you kind of, uh, kind of summarize uh, the, the main message coming from the state legislature, sir, because uh, we've got people that have been calling and they've, they're waiting. Uh, my main message is this. If you care, get out of your chair and get involved because Texas state government has been run by the special interest for too long and too few of us have been fighting the battle. So please come help us. All right. right. Thanks so much, State Representative Lon Burnham. Let's move. Y'all have a great day. Thank Thanks. you so you much, too. sir. Now, Barbara's been waiting for, and waiting. Can we put her on now? Thanks so much for waiting, Barbara, and thanks for calling KNON. Uh, yeah, good morning to the panel. And I just had a question. Um, I lost my job in June. <clears throat> they said they no longer needed me, but we was under a union contract. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to find out, can they fire you if you're on a union contract? Can they fire you? It depends on what the contract says. Uh, yes. yes, in general, in general, yes. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, if it sounds like they're laying people off, is that right? 
you know, they laid us out, but when they started back up, they said our job no longer exists, but it's still going on, and they hired temps to replace us. Mm -hmm. Well, you need to call your union hall and talk to somebody at your union hall and let them know what's going on. That's your best bet. Union uh, hall? Yes, ma'am. Sure is. Uh, And they're listed under labor organizations in the (laughs) yellow pages. The unions are listed there, <laughs> so try to find yours there in the yellow pages. And if that doesn't work, call the AF of LCIO. I'll go. give you that number. It's 214 8-2-1-4. 8-2-6-4-8-0-8. 8-2-6-4-8-0-8. 8-2-6-4-8-0-8. 8-2-6-4-8-0-8. 8-2-6-4-8-0-8. 8-2-6-4-8-0-8. 8-2-6-4-8-0-8. 8-2-6-4-8-0-8. 8-2-6-4-8-0-8. 8-2-6-4-8-0-8. 8-2-6-4-8-0-8. 8-2-6-4-8-0-8. 8-2-6-4-8-0-8. 8-2-6-4-8-0-8. 8-2-6-4-8-0-8. 8-2-6-4-8-
KNON currently has space available to run announcements for you. Tell KNON's listeners about your goods, services, nightclub, concert, or event. Help keep the voice of the people on the air while putting your information on the air. KNON's been named the number one radio station in Dallas by both the Dallas Observer and D Magazine. Put your business with Dallas's number one station. Call now for more information at 214-828-9500, extension 227, or extension 233. For more information, go to KNON.org and click on the Run Spots on KNON page. It's a great way for your business to support community radio while letting more people know about you.